Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. And we are gathering information out of the University of Michigan tonight. Big news with its provost put on leave amid allegations of sexual misconduct. We have the very latest. And the World Health Organization holds an emergency meeting on the new coronavirus as China takes new measures to try to contain the outbreak. See what it means for the U.S. and the risk right here. All right, Frank, we're going to begin, though, here at 5 with opening statements in the impeachment trial of President Donald Trump. Senators are back in the chamber today after a marathon session last night that went on till 2 a.m. Sure did. Yesterday, it was all about rules. Today, the actual opening statements are underway, and these are now going to last for a while. The session started this afternoon with House managers starting to deliver their case. These opening statements set the last 24 hours over three days, so there's still a long way to go before the president's team gets to lay out their defense. And that comes as we await a decision on whether or not witnesses are going to testify at the trial. Alice Barr following it for us on Capitol Hill. Alice. Good evening. This is the Democrats' chance for a solo moment in the spotlight to lay out their case without the partisan back and forth that's defined these proceedings so far. Help them remember. With a prayer for wisdom. Patriots reside on both sides of the aisle. And a call to order. Well, the Senate of the United States is sitting for the trial of the articles of impeachment. House impeachment managers begin their opening arguments, for the first time laying out their entire case against President Trump from start to finish. The Constitution demands the removal of Donald J. Trump from his office as President of the United States. House Democrats have 24 hours over three days to wage an uphill battle. They're aiming to convince a small number of moderates in the Republican-controlled Senate that President Trump obstructed Congress and abused his power by urging Ukraine to announce investigations of his political rivals. His scheme was undertaken for a simple but corrupt reason to help him win re-election in 2020. Senators, silent jurors inside the chamber, but still politicians outside those doors. Republicans defending President Trump against what they call a partisan process. They're on a crusade to destroy this man, and they don't care what they destroy in the process. The president today casting doubt on whether he'd let members of his administration testify, but saying he'd like to be there himself. So why don't you go? I don't know. I'd sort of love to sit right in the front row and stare at their corrupt faces. While Democrats promise to fight for a full process with new evidence. And the focus the American people on the need for a fair trial, which means witnesses and documents. With the real battle now underway, Democrats looking beyond the senators sitting in judgment, hoping to make their case directly to the American public. The next vote on whether to allow witnesses is still several days away, and now President Trump is suggesting he could use executive privilege to block former staffers like John Bolton from testifying. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. All right, Alice, and while the impeachment trial continues, we, again, are live streaming every minute of the hearings from start to finish. You can find the link on the homepage of ClickOnDetroit.com. All right, now to breaking news here that we're following at 5. A provost at the University of Michigan has been put on leave amid allegations of sexual misconduct. Dr. Martin Filbert, a professor of toxicology, will be off the job while an outside law firm investigates. Sean Lay is live in the newsroom tonight with all the allegations and the school's response, Sean. That's right, Kimberly. Here's what we're gathering at this hour. U of M Provost Martin Filbert was placed on leave yesterday. Here are the details we're getting of the reason why. Now, in a letter to students, the university president says the school received several allegations of sexual misconduct, naming Dr. Filbert. These reports came in over two days, January 16th, and the 17th, so an internal investigation was immediately launched and the university retained an outside law firm to do another independent investigation of what are being called very serious allegations. The Department of Public Safety at U of M was also brought into this and the school asked Dr. Filbert while the uh, allegations were made not to come to work. One of the many statements being made by the president of U of M, we thank the individuals who have come forward with these allegations. We know reporting requires Courage. That's from Mark Schlissel, the
the president of the U of M. The school is now working on naming an acting provost, provo provost I should say. Filbert has really been a fixture at U of M since 1995. He was the former dean of the school. He's been provost since 2017. That is the chief academic officer there at the school, Kimberly. Right, so Sean, anything or statement uh, or a comment from Dr. Filbert himself? You know, we, we reached heard? out to him right away. As soon as this news broke, we have not heard back yet. Someone we are hearing from is Representative Debbie Dingell, and she is commending uh, what she is calling survivors coming forward in a difficult situation, but she also says everyone deserves due process and a thorough investigation. So much more to come on this. Indeed, okay, Sean, thanks. Other news we're following tonight, an investigation underway into a gruesome crime on Detroit's west side. We say a man was shot, bound with electrical cords, and then set on fire. It happened in the area of West Outer Drive in Westbrook. Coco McAvoy is live for us tonight. Coco, you can clearly see where this happened. Yes, that's right. Take a look at this. You can see there are burn marks still left behind in the road from where the incident happened here this morning. And though it's an empty street, there are cameras monitored by police and police were able to see exactly what happened. Early this morning on Detroit's west side, a call went out over the scanner. For officer safety, for officer safety, shots were fired in the area of Lassa and Silver. The area where the shot was fired was Westbrook and Outer Drive. There's not a single house on the street, but neighbors on other blocks nearby heard gunfire this morning. So no call her approximately eight to nine shots. Detroit police cameras set up in the area then captured a disturbing sight. One of our cameras just had a caravan dump a body and catch it on fire. Police say the body was found wrapped in electrical cords. The man was also shot before being set on fire. Fire still going on with the body. He said fire and a couple scout cars. I'm trying to get the vehicle put right now. Daylight revealed the burn marks left behind in the road. Now there are a lot of unanswered questions. Who shot the man and dumped him in the middle of the road? And what was the motive? All questions police are hoping to answer soon. And of course, as you heard, police were trying to see if they could see the license plate on that van. As of right now, we're not sure if they were able to, but of course, we're going to keep in contact with them. And of course, if you know anything about what happened, you're asked to call the Detroit Police Department. Back to you. So no license plate, Coco, but are there any descriptions that police are putting out? So as of right now, police aren't putting out any descriptions, but they do have that video. So we are expecting them to put out a description very soon. Yeah. All right. Keep us posted. Coco, thanks. All right. Now the right lane and right shoulder and right entrance ramp are closed at Livernoy and I-94 in southwest Detroit due to a crash. That crash happened around 1.30 this afternoon. The truck went off the road from Livernoy and ended up on the embankment of I-94. Stick with Local 4 and click on Detroit.com for updates. Halfway through the work week now, and Ben has his eyes, of course, this is the way it's been, third week in a row, we've got a, a weekend storm headed That's our way. That's right, my goodness, it, it, always on the weekend, but I guess it has its good and it's bad, right? It looked like clockwork. We can even see it on the radar, but it appears that this system is neither coming on the weekend, nor really is going to be a storm. So, discuss. We were... <laughs> We were watching Coffee Talk in the uh, weather office all afternoon, but this is the system. It's just going to take its own sweet time in getting here, but it does look like it's going to be mainly a Friday event. So that's the big change today. Still looking like more rain and less snow. So we'll look at how much of each we're going to get. But as far as the locations go, I think everybody gets something out of this. So we'll run it down in your four zone forecast in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Ben. Well, the Detroit man charged with sexually assaulting a 14-year-old girl learned his sentence today. 22-year-old Prince James Lewis is convicted of criminal sexual conduct. Back in April, he was arrested after the teen girl reported the assault to Redford Township Police, saying it happened at a home in Detroit. In court today, Lewis expressed remorse for his actions. I don't want to say the bottom from my heart. I want to say I'm sorry for what I have done, and I have learned my lesson. Judge sentenced Lewis to 1 to 15 years in prison. He must also register as a sex offender. A Michigan woman says a passenger assaulted her while she slept on a Spirit Airlines flight. 22-year-old Tia Jackson told CNN that a man touched her intimately while she was sitting in the middle seat. The alleged assault happened Tuesday on a flight from Atlanta to Detroit. 
Jackson says she notified the flight attendant and was offered another seat. According to Spirit Airlines, law enforcement began investigating immediately. Police say the FBI is now handling the investigation.